Yoga philosophy is one of the six major orthodox schools of Hinduism. Ancient, medieval and most modern literature often refers to the yoga school of Hinduism simply as yoga. It is closely related to the Samkhya school of Hinduism. The yoga school's systematic studies to better oneself physically, mentally and spiritually has influenced all other schools of Indian philosophy. The Yoga Sutras of Patanjali is a key text of the Yoga school of Hinduism. The epistemology of the Yoga school of Hinduism, like the Samkhya school, relies on three of six pramanas as the means of gaining reliable knowledge. These include pratyaksa perception, anumana inference, and sabda aptavakana word, testimony of reliable sources. The metaphysics of yoga is built on the same dualist foundation as the Samkhya school. The universe is conceptualized as composed of two realities in the Samkhya yoga schools, purusa consciousness and prakriti matter. Jiva, a living being, is considered as a state in which purusa is bonded to prakriti in some form, in various permutations and combinations of various elements, senses, feelings, activity and mind. During the state of imbalance or ignorance, one or more constituents overwhelm the others, creating a form of bondage. The end of this bondage is called liberation, or moksha, by both the yoga and samkhya schools of Hinduism. The ethical theory of the yoga school is based on yamas and niyama, as well as elements of the guna theory of samkhya. The yoga school of Hinduism differs from the closely related non theistic, atheistic samkhya school by incorporating the concept of a personal, yet essentially inactive, deity, or personal god, Ishvara. While the Samkhya school suggests that jnana knowledge is a sufficient means to moksha, the yoga school suggests that systematic techniques and practice, or personal experimentation, combined with Samkhya's approach to knowledge, is the path to moksha. Yoga shares several central ideas with the Advaita Vedanta school of Hinduism, with the difference that yoga philosophy is a form of experimental mysticism, while Advaita Vedanta is a form of monistic personalism. Advaita Vedanta, and other schools of Hinduism, accept, adopt and build upon many of the teachings and techniques of yoga. History The origins of the yoga is said to be started by Lord Shiva. Some of its earliest discussions are found in 1st millennium BCE Indian texts such as the Katha Upanishad, the Shvetashvatara Upanishad and the Maitri Upanishad, the root of yoga is found in hymn 5.81.1 of the Rig Veda, a dedication to rising sun god in the morning Savitri, interpreted as yoke or yogically control. Yunhate mana yuta yunhate dio vipra viprasya burhato vipasita seers of the vast illumined seer yogically, yunhate yunjanti control their minds and their intelligence. Rigveda, however, does not describe yoga philosophy with the same meaning or context as in medieval or modern times. Early references to practices that later became part of yoga school of Hinduism, are made in Brihadaranyaka Upanishad, the oldest Upanishad. Gavin Flood translates it as Having become calm and concentrated, one perceives the self atman, within oneself. The practice of pranayama consciously regulating breath is mentioned in hymn 1.5.23 of Brihadaranyaka Upanishad c. 900 BCE, and the practice of pratyahara concentrating all of one's senses on self is mentioned in hymn 8.15 of Chandogya Upanishad c. approximately 800-700 BCE. The Katha Upanishad, dated to be from about the middle of the first millennium BCE, in verses 2.6.6 through 2.6.13 recommends a path to self-knowledge, and calls this path yoga. The Yoga school of Hinduism is mentioned in foundational texts of other orthodox schools such as the Vaisika Sutras, Naya Sutras and Brahma Sutras, which suggests that the yoga philosophy was in vogue in the first millennium BCE. It influenced and was influenced by other schools and Indian philosophies. There are, for example, numerous parallels in the concepts in the Samkhya school of Hinduism, Yoga and the Abhidharma schools of thought, particularly from the 2nd century BCE to the 1st century AD, notes Larson. Patanjali's Yoga Sutras may be a synthesis of these three traditions. From the Samkhya school of Hinduism, the Yoga Sutras adopt the reflective discernment Adhyavasaya of Prakriti and Purusa dualism, its metaphysical rationalism, as well its three epistemic methods to gaining reliable knowledge. 
From Abhidharma Buddhism's idea of niradhasamadhi, suggests Larson, the Yoga Sutras adopt the pursuit of an altered state of awareness, but unlike Buddhism, which believes that there is neither self nor soul, Yoga is physicalist and realist like Samkhya in believing that each individual has a self and soul. The third concept that the Yoga Sutras synthesize into its philosophy is the ancient ascetic traditions of isolation, meditation and introspection. The systematic collection of ideas of the Yoga school of Hinduism is found in the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. After its circulation in the first half of the first millennium CE, many Indian scholars reviewed it, then published their basya notes and commentary on it, which together form a canon of texts called the Patanjali Yogasastra, the treatise on yoga of Patanjali. Topic. Six darsanas The Yoga school of Hinduism has been included as one of the six orthodox schools in medieval era Indian texts. The other schools are Samkhya, Naya, Vaisheshika, Mimamsa and Vedanta. Topic. Philosophy The Yoga school of Hindu philosophy is most closely related to the Samkhya school. In both, the foundational concepts include two realities, Purusha and Prakriti. The Purusha is defined as that reality which is pure consciousness and is devoid of thoughts or qualities. The Prakriti is the empirical, phenomenal reality which includes matter and also mind, sensory organs and the sense of identity self, soul. A living being is held in both schools to be the union of matter and mind. The Yoga school differs from the Samkhya school in its views on the ontology of Purusha, on axiology and on soteriology. Topic. Epistemology Yoga school, like Samkhya school, considers pratyaksa or dristam direct sense perception, anumana inference, and sabda or aptavakana verbal testimony of the sages or shastras to be the only valid means of knowledge or pramana. Unlike few other schools of Hinduism such as Advaita Vedanta, Yoga did not adopt the following three pramanas, upamana comparison and analogy, arthapati postulation, deriving from circumstances or anupalabdi non-perception, negative, cognitive proof. Pratyak Pratyaksaya means perception. It is of two types in Hindu texts, external and internal. External perception is described as that arising from the interaction of five senses and worldly objects, while internal perception is described by this school as that of inner sense, the mind. The ancient and medieval Indian texts identify four requirements for correct perception, indriyarthasanikarsa direct experience by one's sensory organs with the object, whatever is being studied, aviapadesya non-verbal, correct perception is not through hearsay, according to ancient Indian scholars, where one's sensory organ relies on accepting or rejecting someone else's perception, avyabhakara does not wander, correct perception does not change, nor is it the result of deception because one's sensory organ or means of observation is driven drifting, defective, suspect and vyavasayatmaka definite, correct perception excludes judgments of doubt, either because of one's failure to observe all the details, or because one is mixing inference with observation and observing what one wants to observe, or not observing what one does not want to observe. Some ancient scholars proposed, unusual perception, as pramana and called it internal perception, a proposal contested by other Indian scholars. The internal perception concepts included pratibha intuition, samanyalakshana pratyaksa a form of induction from perceived specifics to a universal, and nyanalakshana pratyaksa a form of perception of prior processes and previous states of a topic of study by observing its current state. Further, some schools of Hinduism considered and refined rules of accepting uncertain knowledge from pratyaksa pranama, so as to contrast nirnaya definite judgment, conclusion from anajyavasaya indefinite judgment. Anumana, anumana means inference. It is described as reaching a new conclusion and truth from one or more observations and previous truths by applying reason. Observing smoke and inferring fire is an example of anumana. In all except one Hindu philosophies, this is a valid and useful means to knowledge. The method of inference is explained by Indian texts as consisting of three parts, pratijna hypothesis, hichu a reason, and drishtanta examples. The hypothesis must further be broken down into two parts, state the ancient Indian scholars, sadhya that idea which needs to proven or disproven and paksha the object on which the sadhya is predicated. 
The inference is conditionally true if sapaksha positive examples as evidence are present, and if vipaksha negative examples as counter -evidence are absent. For rigor, the Indian philosophies also state further epistemic steps. For example, they demand vyapti, the requirement that the hechu reason must necessarily and separately account for the inference in all cases, in both sapaksha and vipaksha. A conditionally proven hypothesis is called a nigamana conclusion. Sabda Sabda means relying on word, testimony of past or present reliable experts. Haryana explains Sabda Pramana as a concept which means reliable expert testimony. The schools of Hinduism which consider it epistemically valid suggest that a human being needs to know numerous facts, and with the limited time and energy available, he can learn only a fraction of those facts and truths directly. He must cooperate with others to rapidly acquire and share knowledge and thereby enrich each other's lives. This means of gaining proper knowledge is either spoken or written, but through sabda words. The reliability of the source is important, and legitimate knowledge can only come from the sabda of reliable sources. The disagreement between the schools of Hinduism has been on how to establish reliability. Some schools, such as Karvaka, state that this is never possible, and therefore sabda is not a proper pramana. Other schools debate means to establish reliability. Topic. Metaphysics The metaphysics of Yoga school, again like Samkhya school, is a form of dualism. It considers consciousness and matter, self, soul and body as two different realities. The Samkhya Yoga system espouses dualism between consciousness and matter by postulating two irreducible, innate and independent realities, Purusha and Prakriti. While the Prakriti is a single entity, the Samkhya Yoga schools admit a plurality of the Purusas in this world. Unintelligent, unmanifest, uncaused, ever active, imperceptible and eternal Prakriti is alone the final source of the world of objects. The Purusa is considered as the conscious principle, a passive enjoyer and the Prakriti is the enjoyed bogya. Samkhya Yoga believes that the Purusa cannot be regarded as the source of inanimate world, because an intelligent principle cannot transform itself into the unconscious world. This metaphysics is a pluralistic spiritualism, a form of realism built on the foundation of dualism. Yoga school of Hinduism adopts the theory of guna from Samkhya. Guna's theory states that three gunas innate tendency, attributes are present in different proportions in all beings, and these three are sattva guna goodness, constructive, harmonious, rajas guna passion, active, confused, and tamas guna darkness, destructive, chaotic. These three are present in every being but in different proportions, and the fundamental nature and psychological dispositions of beings is a consequence of the relative proportion of these three gunas. When sattva guna predominates an individual, the qualities of lucidity, wisdom, constructiveness, harmonious, and peacefulness manifest themselves. When rajas is predominant, attachment, craving, passion driven activity and restlessness manifest, and when tamas predominates in an individual, ignorance, delusion, destructive behavior, lethargy, and suffering manifests. The Gunas theory underpins the philosophy of mind in Yoga school of Hinduism. The early scholars of Yoga philosophy posits that the Purusa consciousness by its nature is sattva constructive, while Prakriti matter by its nature is tamas chaotic. It further posits that individuals at birth have buddhi intelligence, sattvic. As life progresses and churns this buddhi, it creates ahamkara ego, rajasic. When ego in turn is churned by life, manas temper, mood, tamasic is produced. Together, buddhi, ahamkara and manas interact and constitute sata in yoga school of Hinduism. Unrestrained modification of sata causes suffering. A way of life that empowers one to become ever more aware of one's consciousness and spirituality innate in buddhi, is the path to one's highest potential and a more serene, content, liberated life. Patanjali's Yoga Sutra begins, in verse 2 of Book 1, by defining yoga as restraining the sata from vrittis <laughs> Axiology 
Axiology in the texts of Yoga school of Hindu philosophy include both a theory of values through the observances of positive values and avoidance of negative, as well as an aesthetic theory on bliss from intrinsic and extrinsic perspectives. The values to be observed are called niyamas, while those to be avoided are called yamas in yoga philosophy. Over 60 different ancient and medieval era texts of yoga philosophy discuss yamas and niyamas. The specific theory and list of values varies between the texts, however, Ahimsa, Satya, Astya, Svadaya, Kashama, and Daya are among the predominantly discussed ethical concepts by majority of these texts, the five yamas listed by Patanali in Yoga Sutra 2. 30 are Ahimsa, Ahimsa non-violence, non-harming other living beings Satya, Satya truthfulness, non-falsehood Astya, Astya non-stealing Brahmacharya, Brahmacharya celibacy, non-cheating on one's partner Aparigraha, Aparigraha non-avarice, non-possessiveness Patanjali, in Book 2, explains how and why each of the above self-restraints help in the personal growth of an individual. For example, in verse 2.35, Patanjali states that the virtue of non-violence and non-injury to others ahimsa leads to the abandonment of enmity, a state that leads the yogi to the perfection of inner and outer amity with everyone, everything. Other texts of the yoga school of Hinduism include Kasama, Kasama forgiveness, Dirti, Dirti fortitude, non-giving up in adversity, Daya, Daya compassion, Arjava, Arjava non-hypocrisy, and Mitahara, Mitahara measured diet. The Niyamas part of theory of values in the yoga school include virtuous habits, behaviors, and observances. The Yoga Sutra lists the Niyamas as Saka, purity, clearness of mind, speech and body. Santosa, contentment, acceptance of others, acceptance of one's circumstances as they are in order to get past or change them, optimism for self Tapas, persistence, perseverance, austerity Svadaya, study of Vedas see Sabda in epistemology section, study of self, self-reflection, introspection of self's thoughts, speeches and actions Isvarapranadana, contemplation of the Ishvara God, Supreme Being, Brahman, True Self, Unchanging Reality as with Yamas, Patanjali explains how and why each of the above Niyamas help in the personal growth of an individual. For example, in verse 2.42, Patanjali states that the virtue of contentment and acceptance of others as they are santosa leads to the state where inner sources of joy matter most, and the craving for external sources of pleasant ceases. Other texts of the Yoga school expanded the list of values under Niyamas, to include behaviors such as Astika, Astika belief in personal God, faith in self, conviction that there is knowledge in Vedas, Upanishads, Dana, Dana charity, sharing with others, Re, Re remorse and acceptance of one's past, mistakes, ignorance, modesty, Mati, Mati think and reflect, reconcile conflicting ideas, and Vrata, Vrata resolutions and vows, fast, pious observances. Topic. Soteriology Yoga school of Hinduism holds that ignorance is the cause of suffering and samsara. Liberation, like many other schools, is removal of ignorance, which is achieved through discriminative discernment, knowledge and self-awareness. The Yoga Sutras is Yoga school's treatise on how to accomplish this. Samadhi is the state where ecstatic awareness develops, state yoga scholars, and this is how one starts the process of becoming aware of purusa and true self. It further claims that this awareness is eternal, and once this awareness is achieved, a person cannot ever cease being aware. This is moksha, the soteriological goal in Hinduism. Book 3 of Patanjali's Yoga Sutra is dedicated to soteriological aspects of yoga philosophy. Patanjali begins by stating that all limbs of yoga are necessary foundation to reaching the state of self-awareness, freedom and liberation. He refers to the three last limbs of yoga as sanyama, in verses 3.4 to 3.5, and calls it the technology for discerning principle and mastery of sata and self-knowledge. In verse 3.12, the Yoga Sutras state that this discerning principle then empowers one to perfect san tranquility and udita reason in one's mind and spirit, through intentness. This leads to one's ability to discern the difference between sabda word, artha meaning and pratyaya understanding, and this ability empowers one to compassionately comprehend the cry, speech of all living beings. 
Once a yogi reaches this state of sanyama, it leads to unusual powers, intuition, self knowledge, freedoms, and kaivalya. The soteriological goal of the yogi, the benefits of yoga philosophy of Hinduism, is then summarized in verses 3.46 to 3.55 of Yoga Sutras, stating that the first five limbs leads to bodily perfections such as beauty, loveliness, strength, and toughness, while the last three limbs through sanyama leads to mind and psychological perfections of perceptiveness, one's nature, mastery over egoism, discriminative knowledge of purity, self and soul. This knowledge once reached is irreversible, states Yogasutra's book IV. God in Yoga School of Hinduism Yoga philosophy allows the concept of God, unlike the closely related Samkhya school of Hinduism which is atheistic, non-theistic. Hindu scholars such as the 8th century Adi Sankara, as well many modern academic scholars describe the Yoga school as Samkhya school with God. The Yoga Sutras of Patanjali use the term Isvara in 11 verses, I.23 through I.29, 2.1, 2.2, 2.32 and 2.45. Ever since the sutra's release, Hindu scholars have debated and commented on who or what is Isvara. These commentaries range from defining Isvara as a personal god, to a special self, to anything that has spiritual significance to the individual. Witcher explains that while Patanjali's terse verses can be interpreted both as theistic or non-theistic, Patanjali's concept of Isvara in yoga philosophy functions as a transformative catalyst or guide for aiding the yogin on the path to spiritual emancipation." Patanjali defines Isvara Sanskrit, Isvara in verse 24 of Book 1, as a special self, purusavasesa purusavasesa. Sanskrit Klesa karma vipakasaya paramarsta purusavasesa isvara, Yoga Sutras I.24 this sutra of yoga philosophy of Hinduism adds the characteristics of Isvara as that special self which is unaffected, aparamursta aparamursta by one's obstacles, hardships, klesa klesha, one's circumstances created by the past or by one's current actions, karma karma, one's life fruits, vipaka vipaka, and one's psychological dispositions or intentions, asaya ashaya. Topic. Text sources The most studied ancient and medieval era texts of the Yoga School of Philosophy include those by Patanjali, Bhaskara, Haribhadra, Jaina scholar, Boja, and Himachandra. References to the teachings of the Yoga School of Hinduism abound in ancient Indian texts of other orthodox schools of Hinduism. For example, verse 5.2.17 of Vaisheshika Sutra by Kannada, belonging to the Vaisheshika school of Hinduism and dated to be from the first millennium BCE, states. Pleasure and pain results from contact of soul, sense, mind and object. Non-origination of that follows when the mind becomes steady in the soul. After it, there is non-existence of pain in the embodied soul. This is that yoga. The Naya Sutras by Akshapada variously dated to be from 4th to 2nd century BCE, and belonging to the Naya school of Hinduism, in chapter 4.2 discusses the importance of yoga philosophy as follows. We are instructed to practice meditation in such places as a forest, a cave or a sand bank. Such possibilities the opponent claims may occur even in release. It is, we reply, not so, because knowledge must spring up only in a body already in the state of formation. And there is absence of a body in our release. For that purpose, there should be a purifying of our soul by abstinence from evil, and observance of certain virtues, as well as by following the spiritual injunctions gleaned from yoga. To secure release moksha, it is necessary to study and follow this treatise on knowledge yoga, as well as to hold discussions with those learned in that treatise. The Brahma Sutras by Bhadarayana dated to be from 5th century BCE to 2nd century BCE, belonging to the Vedanta school of Hinduism, in Chapter 2 assumes the existence of a text called Yoga Smriti. Scholars contest whether this text was a precursor or the same as Patanjali's Yoga Sutra, but either premise is uncertain. The verses of Brahma Sutras assert that dualism of the prevailing yoga philosophy is refuted, as the value of yoga is as a means to realization of the self, not in propositions about self that is in conflict with the Vedic texts. Radhakrishnan translates the text as follows. 
If it is said that there will result the defect of not allowing room for certain smiritis, we say not so, because there will result the defect of not allowing room for some other smiritis further knowledge, and on account of the non-perception of others. Thereby, Pradhana theory of the Yoga Smriti is refuted. The Yoga Vasistha is a syncretic text on yoga philosophy, variously dated to be from 6th to 14th century CE. It is structured as a dialogue between sage Vasistha of the Vedic era and the philosopher King Rama of the Hindu epic Ramayana. The text synthesizes elements of Vedanta, Jainism, Yoga, Samkhya, Saiva Siddhanta and Mahayana Buddhism. Among other things, the text discusses yoga philosophy in its various chapters. In section 6.1, Yoga Vasistha introduces yoga as follows. Yoga is the utter transcendence of the mind and is of two types. Self-knowledge is one type, another is the restraint of the life force of self-limitations and psychological conditioning. Yoga has come to mean only the latter, yet both the methods lead to the same result. To some, self-knowledge through inquiry is difficult, to others yoga is difficult. But my conviction is that the path of inquiry is easy for all, because self-knowledge is the ever-present truth. I shall now describe to you the method of yoga. See also Yoga Raja Yoga Bhakti Yoga Chitapum Jnana Yoga Karma Yoga Shinshin Toitsu Do, Japanese Yoga References Sources Printed sources Further reading Alain Danielou Yoga, Mastering the Secrets of Matter and the Universe, ISBN 978-0-89281-301-8, Appendix D, Main Sanskrit Treatises on Yoga Carl Olson 2007, The Many Colors of Hinduism, A Thematic Historical Introduction, Rutgers University Press, ISBN 978-0-8135-4068-9, Chapter 5 Karl Potter 2009, Encyclopedia of Indian Philosophies Vol. 1, Bibliography, ISBN 978-8120803084, Bibliography on Yoga School of Hinduism, pages 1073-1093, White, David Gordon 2014, The Yoga Sutra of Patanjali, A Biography, Princeton University Press Mail, Gregor 2007, Ashtanga Yoga, Practice and Philosophy, New World Library External links Yoga and Freedom, A Reconsideration of Patanali's Classical Yoga, Ian Witcher 1998, Philosophy East and West, Vol. 48, No. 2, pages 272–322 Yoga and Modern Philosophy, Mircea Iliadi The Journal of General Education, Vol. 15, No. 2, pages 124–137 Mind – Consciousness Dualism in S. Nakia Yoga Philosophy, Paul Schweizer 1993, Philosophy and Phenomenological Research, Vol. 53, No. 4, pages 845–859 Samskaras in Yoga Philosophy and Western Psychology, N. Mishra 1953, Philosophy East and West, Vol. 2, No. 4, pages 308–316 Plato in the Light of Yoga, Jeffrey Gold 1996, Philosophy East and West, Vol. 46, No. 1 Jan. 1996, pages 17–32 Yoga in Sankara's Advaita Vedanta T. S. Rukmani 2006, Annals of the Bhandarkar Oriental Research Institute, Vol. 87, pages 123–134 General Systems Philosophy and Samkhya Yoga, Some Remarks, M. K. Banerjee 1982, Philosophy East and West, Vol. 32, No. 1, pages 99–104 Patanjali's Yoga Sutras, A Synthesis of Many Yogic Traditions T. S. Rukmani 1981, Annals of the Bhandarkar Oriental Research Institute, Vol. 62, pages 213–218 
The Yogi and the Goddess Nicholas F. Jeer International Journal of Hindu Studies, Vol. 1, No. 2, pages 265 287. Yoga Philosophy Being Yoga Philosophy and Practice with James Traverse. 